to Jesus Followers Community. I am Sam. Bible says, Romans 10, 17. Faith come to hearing and hearing the Word of God. Let's hear His words today. If you hear His words, God's words, you will have faith. If you hear Him again, your faith will grow. So hear Him again and again and again and again. God bless you. Blessed Sunday to one and all! Welcome to Jesus Followers Community. This is PE. And once again, it's my privilege to share the word of the Lord today. The message for today is about hope. And may the Lord bless His words. May it reach your lives fully. And may you be encouraged for today's word. Alright! So, I just want to share to you something. For the past few days, hindi ko na pumabilang kung ilan na yung nagtanong sa akin, kailan kaya matapos ang COVID-19? At kailan kaya makaraos ang mga tao with this pandemic? Okay, everyone is striving. Some are already losing hope na nabadalitaan po natin sa mga nakaraan. May mga statistics na tumataas ang mga kaso ng suicides. They are losing hope because of what's happening around us. But today, may the message of the Lord bring hope in your lives. Alright, so let me begin with this. Well, the COVID-19 put almost everyone in a hopeless situation. Do you agree or do you disagree? <laughs> okay, so magkikita po natin na inapektuhan tayo ng COVID-19 sa napakadaming paraan. Nandiyan ng physical, emotional, mental, social, financial. Okay, inapektuhan din tayo sa economic na pamamaraan or aspeto. And most of all, it affected us somehow spiritually. And we cannot deny the fact. A statistic says na nagbumabagsak daw ang attendance ng mga church uh, attendance. Okay? Dahil live na lang, well, maaaring wala ng pang-load, maaaring uh, dahil sa demand ng internet, okay, humina ang internet. Pwede, pwede. Okay? Or, meron din nagsasabi na parang dinisregard na ang essence ng pag-church. Okay, so pwede naman palang hindi gumawa, pumunta sa church. So, in na ng iba na pwede namang hindi mag-attend ng live service sa church. How sad is that? But that's the fact. Alright? Not only statistics, the news, everything, the reality. It shows us that in this time, there is hopelessness. Okay, but I would tell you today that being hopeless doesn't mean that you lose already hope. Having or being in a hopeless situation doesn't mean you already lose all your hope. Alright, so this is my main statement for today. You might be hopeless, but still you can be hopeful. Hopeless, but hopeful. Alright, this word hopeless brings a very negative uh, meaning. Kapag sinabing hopeless, ay ayoko yan. Kapag sinabing hopeless, lahat aayawan. Alright, because hopelessness brings despair, brings frustrations, okay? Brings a lot of negative impacts in our lives. Alright, 
In the Bible, and even in our lives now, the people of all the saints before, and all the Christians right now, alam nyo ba, hopelessness will always arise. But, if you are with God, and God is with you, <laughs> hindi ka po mawawalan ng pag-asa. Okay? So, napakaganda po na meron tayong hope. So, even in this hopeless situation, we can be hopeful. Alright, but this message of the Lord, I'm going to bring it to you today that this would give you hope. Hallelujah. Okay, so let me give you this scenario in the Bible, especially the Israelites, some of the remnants, and this took place during the captivity. Okay, alam nyo ba na may Meron pang mas matinding problema na nangyari sa mga tao noon kesa sa nararanasan natin ngayon. What was that? Okay, if you look at the main scenario in Lamentations, the book of Lamentations, it's, it's full of lament. Parang wala kang mababasang happiness, wala kang mababasang rejoicing, wala kang mababasang celebration, walang, wala. It's all about sadness, despair, frustration, hopelessness. Let's look at what, hap what was happening. Okay, if you look at chapter 2 verse 12, children beg food from their mothers. Alam mo yun, kailangan mo pang mag-beg ng food. Eh, responsibilidad yan ng mga magulang na i-feed ang kanilang mga bata. But in those case, in those days, children beg food. What else? Young men and women were cut down by sword. Alam nyo po, ang sword ay mas matindi pa sa coronavirus. Kasi pag tinamaan ka ng coronavirus, okay, pwede pang matreat yan. According to the experts, okay, and the medical practitioners, at ganun din sa mga researchers, ang sabi nila, ang COVID-19 is just approximately more or less 1% lang ang namamatay. Okay? So, there's this big tendency na makasurvive ang sino mang maapektuhan or ma-infect ng COVID-19. How about the sword? Young men and women na nasa kanila ang future ng kanilang bansa noon, na nasa kanila ang kalakasan ng bansa noon or ng city nila noon. But, what happens to those young men and women? They were cut down by swords. Ang swords na ito ay hindi po kutsilyo na pag nasaksak ka, eh, mas konti ang bleeding. Ang sword po, pag nasaksak ka, usha, usha. Okay, maaring pugot ulo, maaring labas ang bituka, maaring because a sword is longer than a knife. Next is, the formerly compassionate mothers use their children for food. Wow! Totoo pala to ang cannibalism, kumakain ng buhay na tao, noon pa pala yun. Okay? So, even the Bible, in the book of Lamentations, chapter 4, makikita natin na pati itong mga nanay, kinakain nila yung kanilang mga anak dahil sa famine. Alright? Buti nga ngayon, nauubos ang pansit kanton, nauubos ang ating mga noodles, nauubos ang ating mga sardinas sa mga, depart sa, sa mga uh, stores. Alright? Kasi yun lang ang kinakain natin. We are more than blessed. Okay, so kung hopeless na tayo ngayon, let's think about those people before. They are even more hopeless na pati yung sarili nilang anak, kakainin nila? Wow! That's not good. Okay, sasabihin ni Sam Sam yan, that's not good. Alright, so this is the last thing that I want to share to you. If we look at their very situation before, even the city roads, okay, ito ay nagmumorn dahil sa nangyaring kaguluhan. You know, the rubbles have piled up. Alam niyo po yung mga gumuhong gusali, yung mga, uh, isipin natin yung mga nasasabugan ngayon na mga buildings. Ganun. It was a complete desolation. Alright? It's a complete destruction. Buti nga tayo ngayon, makakita tayo dyan sa street, walang tao eh. <laughs> Empty. 
less ang traffic sa Manila po according sa news no mula nung nag-lockdown doon simula for the previous months nagkaroon ng clearer sky it has a good impact actually sa ating environment somehow it has benefit okay maraming benefits i should say pero dito yung yung hopeless situation nila dito i think wala kang makikitang benefit So, everything was a complete destruction and hopelessness. It was a complete despair, complete frustration. Okay? Lahat dyan ay nag-mumorn. Okay? But did you know that in this book of Lamentations, there's just these three verses na magbibigay sa atin ng hope. And I'd like us to read that today. In Lamentations chapter 3 verses 21 to 23 the first verse says but this I call to mind and therefore I have hope the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases his mercies never come to an end they are new every morning great is your faithfulness Wow! Akalain mo, sa buong kwento ng Lamentations na puro bad news, may isang good news na nakalakip. Okay? So, this, I, this is a very good message of hope to every one of us. And let's try to understand it further. If we would learn the book of Lamentations, this is just what the book tries to tell us. That in the midst of hopelessness, there is hope. And in the midst of hopelessness, you can be hopeful that something is good. God is gonna do it. Uh, God will gonna do something good, okay? And God will gonna show you that His mercies are never ending. God will gonna let you see. God gonna let you experience. Will gonna let you have all that love that He has for you. All right. So this is the question now. What would you do when you are hopeless? So how can you revive your hope in times of hopelessness? Pwede bang i-revive? Buti pa nga daw yung namamatay eh. Okay, o kaya yung 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 kalulunod lang pwedeng i-revive, no? So kailangan may gawin ang doctor or health practitioner or kaya isang medic para ma-revive ang tao. Alam niyo ba na ang hope ay nare-revive din? Okay. So if you are if your hope is already dying in this hopeless situation, this is something that you can do. What CPR? Hindi po ito cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Baka naman pag may nagkasakit ng COVID, ipahiga mo agad. Higa! Pam 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 pam. Okay? Baka naman kapag mayroong nawala ng trabaho, higa! Pump, 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 pump. Okay, i-CCPR po natin. Lako, patay tayo dyan. Alright, may process po yan na ginagawa. Baka baka patay pa tayo ng tao kung yan ang gagawin natin. Okay, so the CPR here clearly means, see, to conceive hope in your mind. P, to profess God's love and mercy. R, to reiterate his faithfulness let's look at this closely let us see conceive hope in your mind paano okay alam nyo po nung inaral ko po itong pinaka verse na ito meron pala siyang hebrew word na esal alright so sa hebrew lexicon niya esal Ashiv. Ibig sabihin, you have to remember that God is with you. Okay. So ngayon, if you remember that God is with you, doon mo lang mailalagay sa isip mo na meron ka pang pag-asa. In another term, you can say that as long as God is with you, you will always have hope. Therefore, that kind of hope comes from the Lord, comes from knowing that God is with you, comes from your consciousness that God is with you. Now, if we will be 
unconscious or if we will forget that God is with us, therefore, we will also forget about hope. Kaya nga sabi nila, ang kristyano dapat hindi nawawalan ng pag-asa. Ang totoong kristyano hindi nawawalan ng pag-asa. Because as long as God is with you, you will always have hope. What else can you do? Alright? So, how can you conceive hope in your mind? Here's number two. Remember God in your mind, in your heart, in your inner being. Alam niyo po, ito, ang sabi niya dito is, et al shiv libid. Ang libid po dito, ang ibig sabihin niyan ay yung mind. And that mind, kapag pag-aaralin natin po yan sa pinaka-konteksto niya, ang ibig sabihin niya ay yung inner being mo. Okay? So, it doesn't only mean that iisipin mo si God. No! When you conceive God in your mind, you have to put God in your mind, in your heart, in your will, in your decisions, in your plans, in your life, in your inner being. Because that wha that is what, or that's how you put God in your mind. And let's live your whole being. Okay? So you can never run out of hope kung gagawin mo yan. If you will include God, if you would remember God in all the ways that you would do in your life. Alright? So here's another amazing fact about this verse. Did you know that this hope here, okay, ay hindi po yan yung hope na iniisip natin na may pag-asa lang that something is going to happen. No. It has a more meaningful aspect. It has uh, uh, it has this deep message that the Lord wants us to do. When God wants you to have hope, do you know? He also wants you to wait. Okay? Because the hope there Kapag titignan mo sa original word niya, ay yaw kal, which is wait or to wait. So when you have hope, it means you also willing to wait. Why? When everything goes bad, kapag sinabi mong hopeful ka, meaning you are also waiting that God will gonna do something in your life. That means that you are also willing to wait. That God will gonna give you that kind of strength to endure. That means that you are also willing to wait to, to, to see what God can do in your life. You are willing to wait for that wonderful testimony that God is able to give you or bring you in your life. When you have hope in the Lord, it means you can wait for God to react and respond. The people become hopeful. Uh, the people become hopeless because they are looking at what they can do now. But people who are hopeful, they are waiting for God to do something even not now. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe the other day. Maybe next year. Maybe in the long run but they don't lose their hope because the waiting is there they are willing to wait so when you conceive hope in your mind you have to conceive also that kind of waiting attitude hallelujah now if we have conceived this hope in our mind the next thing that we are we should do is this p we have to profess Fast God's love and mercy. How did the author of Lamentations, they said it was written by Jeremiah, but then, let's look at that. Paano niya describe yung God's love and God's mercy? We can see that, that, ang sabi niya doon, God's love and God's mercy first, His love is steadfast. Yung steadfastness dito ay hindi lang basta forever. Okay? God's love that is steadfast meaning just day. His love, His goodness, His kindness, everything that He does, everything that is good in your life, that is forever. God can do that in all the days of your life. 
You have to profess it. You have to say it. You have to claim it. Ang kinin mo. Sabihin mo at ang kinin mo. Proclaim and claim all this love and goodness and kindness of the Lord in your life. Hallelujah. Profess God's love that is steadfast. That is just day. His love, His kindness, His goodness in your life. Hindi pwedeng love lang. It involves goodness and kindness. Wow! That's something three in one that is forever. Mahal ka na nga ng Diyos. Mabuti pa ang Diyos sa'yo. At mabait pa ang Diyos sa'yo. Wow! Yung tatlong bagay na yan dapat natin sabihin at ariin at angkinin at paniwalaan. We have to profess that in our lives. The next thing is, how did the author describe mercy? Ang sabi niya, His mercy is never ceasing. It's tamman no. Ang ibig sabihin niyan ay to be completed and finished. Ibig sabihin, ang pag-iang ang kaawaan ng Diyos sa'yo ay hindi na ta ta pos hallelujah if they if the people would say that habang buhay may pag-asa dito ang sabi niya they are new every morning sinasabi ng Diyos sa iyo ngayon kapatid na bawat araw bawat umaga hanggat may sunrise may bago kang pag-asa hallelujah the lord is telling you right now that the hope that comes from him is always fresh, always new, and it is never completed. Hindi yan natatapos. It's an ending hope that the Lord wants to give to you. If you are hopeless in one situation in your life, remember His word. He said, it's ever new every morning. At hindi yan natatapos. Hallelujah. And here is the last thing that we have to do to have that kind of hope. To revive your dying hope. What is that? R. R is to reiterate God's faithfulness. We have to remember that God is faithful. And His faithfulness is it's steadfast. Again, if we try to understand this steadfastness, this God's great faithfulness, ang sabi po dyan, Rabba emunateka. It means it's a God's attribution. The faithfulness of God is divine. It's not the faithfulness of a husband and wife na pwedeng mag-divorce. It's not the faithfulness of a friend na pwedeng malamatan. It's not a faithfulness of a parent to his child na pwedeng mag-end. God's faithfulness is divine faithfulness. His compassion never faileth. His love for you, His promises for you, He will fulfill every single word that He has promised. Ganyan ka faithful ang ating Panginoon. Okay, if look at this faithfulness, many people are being betrayed. Many people lost oh God, tra lost their trust to all to all some people around them. But God, He is reliable because He is faithful. But God, you can always give your full hope in Him because He is faithful. God, you can always claim His promises because He is faithful. God, He is divine. And He will never fail you. Hallelujah. You have to reiterate that in your mind. You have to say it again and again and again that God is faithful. You know, madaming times that even us, we become uh, sad, we become disappointed, we become hopeless in some situations. But this is just the one statement that we wanted to reiterate over and over again. That God is faithful. 
Hallelujah. If it's not about his faithfulness, I would never be standing here in front of you. If it's not about his faithfulness, maaring patay na ako sa daming disgrasyang naranasan ko sa buhay ko. If it's not of his faithfulness, I will never be grateful right now and be happy with my life. <laughs> Lahat ng masamang bagay sa nakaraan ko, this is all where my hope and strength come from. That God is faithful. Nung nabroken ang family namin, okay, nung bata ako, I always put that in mind that God is faithful. Kaya hindi ko tinigilang manalangin that God will gonna do something about our family. Okay? And there is waiting part. It took me 21 years to finally see that my parents have reunited. Hallelujah! The Lord is faithful. Nung nasa seminary ako at nag-aaral ako, akala ko hindi na ako makakapag-graduate but God has given me job, alright? Nung na-rape ako ng twice, well, God has renewed me. God is faithful. Hallelujah. So many times I've been a failure. I've been hopeless in my life. But this is the only one thing that I have proven true. God is faithful. Hallelujah. So never forget that in your life. How can you have hope when you are hopeless? How can you revive your hope when your hope is dying? Well, ito lamang po ang iyong panghahawakan. Okay? But this I call to mind. And therefore, I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. When you're thinking of reviving your hope, think of these words again. CPR. Conceive hope in your mind. Profess, profess God's love and mercy in your life. And reiterate His faithfulness. The Lord loves you so much. Let us try to watch this video before we pray.
when the Israelites have been in that or had been in that situation in the midst of hopelessness alam nyo ba na may pangako si Lord sa kanila na hindi sila iiwanan ni Lord at hindi sila pababayaan the sufferings of those Israelites were caused by their sin and disobedience to God but then again God is faithful kapag may kasalanan tayo pag may pagkukulang tayo we can always go and ask forgiveness we can always ask forgiveness we can always go back to God we can always return to our first love to God and the Lord will ever receive you embrace you strengthen you and revive your hope once again So remember this word, C-P-R. Conceive hope in your mind. Profess God's love and mercy in your life. And reiterate His faithfulness to you every day. Let us pray. Father God of heaven, You are more than great. Your faithfulness endures forever, Lord God. Your love, your mercy, Lord, kliniklaim namin yan ngayon. And Lord, forgive us for our sins and disobedience. Forgive us from losing our hope, Lord God. Because as long as we are with you, we should never run out of hope, Lord God. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, for giving this message to your children. May this hope, Lord God, revive them, Lord God. May this hope, Lord God, give them inspiration again, Lord God, para mas lalong mag-init sa paglilingkod sa iyo, Lord. May this inspiration, Lord God, may this word of hope, Lord God, strengthen their faith in you. Because they have your promises to cling on. They have, Lord God, your faithfulness to be strong in all the days of their lives. Hallelujah. Fill them with faith right now as they have that hope, as they receive that hope that cometh from you. Thank you so much, Lord, and we glorify you always. Bless every brethren right now. Bless everyone right now who is losing hope. And God, may you bring hope that gives life for every one of them I pray this O oh God and you blot out all our sins O oh Lord fill us with fill our lives with your faithfulness Lord God fill our lives with faith hope and love Lord God and that we may be able to please you in all the days of our lives we glorify you always and we ask this in Jesus mighty name amen and amen be hopeful when you are hopeless have that kind of hope from the lord of hope god alone shall give you that surpassing hope god bless you